Hi everyone, I'm John Wright, the Education Director at Meteorite Workshops. Welcome. This is part one of a two-part tutorial. In both parts, we're going to learn how to improve your photographs by using Photoshop to adjust for lens imperfections and optical distortions. In this first video, we're going to concentrate on perspective adjustments. This alteration is applied most frequently to architectural photography where the chip plane cannot be positioned parallel to the subject plane. In other words, we find ourselves either pointing the camera up or down, which will result in perspective distortion frequently referred to as keystoning. In the second video, I address correcting for barrel distortion, chromatic aberration, and vignetting. Remember this is a video. You can stop and replay any time if I'm getting ahead of you. So let's get started. Before we get started, I'd like to talk about a viewing feature in Photoshop that you'll find probably pretty helpful when you're correcting for distortion and perspective in, um, in your photographs. I like to use the grid. And to view the grid, you simply go to the uh, View menu, go to View, select Show, and then come over to Grid here, and your grid's going to show up. And as you can see, it really kind of accents the um, perspective distortion I have in this particular image. If you want to customize your grid, as I have here, I've made it a nice bold green so you all can see a little easier. I've also made it a, a larger grid uh, so it's more obvious. To customize it, just simply go to uh, uh, Edit, Preferences, I'm going to select General, and in General on the left hand side there you have the option of Guides, Grid, Slices, just select that and right here you can see the, uh, the grid selections you have available to you. Uh, you can pick the color, the style of the line, lines, dash lines, dots, uh, and how frequently you want to have your grid lines and whether you want to have any subdivisions within those grid lines. And I've got it set up uh, for a fairly bold setup here with a bright green grid so it's easier for you all to see. The keyboard shortcut for that on the uh, uh, PC is control apostrophe and on the Mac is uh, command apostrophe. I'm going to turn mine off for now by hitting control apostrophe. This is a classic example of uh, perspective distortion. I was taking this photograph across the street of this building. Uh, it's actually the Stutz Business Center, the whole home of Meteorite Workshops. I was uh, using a pretty wide angle lens so I could get the uh, whole building in. You can see it takes up an entire city block here. Obviously pointing the camera up towards the building, which has resulted in a fairly drastic keystoning effect. And to uh, accent that, I'm going to just draw some lines up uh, the sides of the building. And as you can see as I do this, that the, um, you can see how they all are converging, which is um, fairly unacceptable for architectural photography. So you can see we've got quite a perspective issue here. I'm going to get rid of those lines, just uh, wanted to use those to accent the uh, distortion we have here. Okay. So how do we fix this? We're going to fix it using the lens correction filter and as usual whenever I'm uh, doing something in Photoshop I like to work on a um, copy of the background layer. So I'm going to go to layers, I'm going to duplicate uh, my background, use uh, Control J or Command J, Control J on the PC, Command J on the Mac to duplicate the background. I'm going to hide the, uh, the background, the original background, uh, and then close that uh, menu up. Now, what we're going to, where the uh, lens correction filter is located is, so we go to the filter menu, drop that down, and then come to distort. It's kind of hidden in a distort menu panel. Uh, on CS5, they've given lens correction a more prominent place. They actually put it right, right above liquify in the main menu here. So they've moved it, realizing it's getting used quite a bit. So we'll uh, click on lens correction, and you'll see our lens correction panel open. It comes with a grid already active in it, and you can adjust the grid, the grid size, etc. down here. If you choose, I'm going to bump double the grid side, grid up to 32, and then change the color to a, the same color we had before, so you can see it a little bit better. 
Okay, to adjust the perspective of this now, it's pretty really pretty simple. We come down here to where it says transform. We're adjusting the vertical perspective. We want those um, converging lines to be parallel. So we're going to adjust this by taking it down to a negative number uh, to the point where we see um, the sides of the building. See the sides of the building on the left and the right over here. We want to see them parallel to the grid or pretty close to parallel to it. So I'm going to set that on about a negative 30. Pretty happy with that. You know what, I'm going to, sh I'm going to hide the grid now. Uh, and uh, if you notice, what's happened is we now have this voided area at the bottom of the picture, and the top of the picture is kind of expanded out and went, in, uh, went to, into the border on the left and the right. We have to deal with this vo empty area at the bottom. There's several different ways to do that. We can scale the image up just by simply uh, coming down here to the very bottom here where the scale tool is, and we're just going to scale it up until we see that uh, voided area just disappear at the bottom. And now we have a, a nice image. Um, if you prefer not to scale it up and you want to fill that area in, you can fill it in with the uh, either the background color or you can do what they call the edge extension, which I'll do that real quick. It'll actually take um, the edges of the image at the bottom and kind of transpose them out to fill that in. I'm not too crazy about that because it looks a little blurry, but uh, some people may like that. Uh, I'm going back to the transparent option, uh, and I am going to uh, increase the scale up to about 110%, fills it in there at the bottom, and I'm good. I've got a nice uh, perspective, um, uh, building with a proper perspective. I'm just going to click OK, and there you have it. Please keep in mind that when you correct the perspective of an image that you are going to crop out some of that image. In this case, we cropped out some of the image in, on the upper right and upper left hand side of the image. Um, some of this tree over here was cut out as was some of the tree and the lamp post over here. So let's just take a look at um, the original image. I'm going to hide this layer which was a corrected layer and show you the original image. And you can see we had a lot more of that tree there and a lot more and the lamp post was actually in there. So uh, going from the original to the corrected you can see we cropped out some things on the side there. So you want to keep that in mind when you're actually doing your photography. If you're expecting to correct it, what I like to do is just kind of back up a little bit more to allow for some of this cropping to go on later on in Photoshop. Let's look at a couple more examples of perspective correction. Here's a photograph I took looking down on some buildings and uh, we have the lines converging towards the bottom of the picture now instead of the top. Same solution though, we go to, similar solution, we go to filter, we go to distort, we go to lens correction and now we want to adjust the top of the image so it comes in to the point that we get the uh, sides of the buildings parallel with the grid. Right about there looks pretty good. Then I'm going to scale it up to fill in the void space that's now at the top of the image. You see it's at the top there. And by the way, I mean, if you want to keep everything, you can scale it down and then um, uh, click OK to save that alteration. So you've got options. You don't have to necessarily fill it in completely. So I'm going to take it up a little bit more. And I kind of like that, so I'm going to click OK, and there's that. Uh, another example I have is actually a group of people, um, and this may look OK to you, and most of the time it will look OK, but if you want to tweak this out and make it a little better, we do have some perspective issues. If you look at the decor on the back wall, you can see these lines are pointing down. The camera was elevated. I was kind of looking down at this group a little bit and so we have the lines on the wall that are, uh, are not parallel uh, with the size of the frame as they should be. Same solution again. We go to filter, we go to distort, we go to lens correction and uh, in this case just like before we want to bring the top in a little bit get that decor, whoops going the wrong way, get that decor parallel to the grid, pretty close there, uh, and then I'm going to bump it up a little bit, 
Unfortunately, we weren't perfectly centered when we took this picture. Click OK, and that's a little bit better. So um, you get the idea here that even on um, regular photographs, not necessarily architectural photographs, we can go in and adjust our perspective and improve the quality of the image. That's the end of part one on lens correction filters. If you're interested in learning how to fix barrel distortion, chromatic aberration, and vignetting, check out the second part of this video. Thanks again for watching. My online tutorials are a great way to learn. However, there's a lot of things that I simply don't have time to share with you online. If you want to learn more and enjoy a more hands-on learning experience, check out the classes we offer here at Meteorite Workshops. It's a great way to learn. At Meteorite, we support our students long enough the class is over. Check it out.